Hello and thanks for joining me on this video today. I'm Patrick and um, well what I want to address here is, is um, I notice a lot of times Muslims try to say that they're taught to treat women well and well that's not the truth at all. What the truth is is that Muhammad actually regarded um, women as something just like a party favor or something another I read somebody wrote and the Quran actually teaches absurdities like two women are worth one man. I mean, what? So, anyway, in this video I'm going to use the Quran, not just what you actually can see them doing in real life all around the world, but rather what their filthy book, the Quran, teaches is that they actually don't care about women. So let's just go ahead and um, I'm going to read some out of uh, the Quran, Surah, chapter number 4, verse number 24. Also prohibited are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. Thus Allah ordained prohibitions against you except for these all others are lawful provided ye seek them in marriage with gifts from your property, desiring chastity, not lust, seeing that you derive benefit from them, give them their dowers, at least as prescribed, but if a dower is prescribed, agree mutual to, mutually to vary it. There is no blame on you. Now let's turn to Surah 3350. O Prophet, we have made lawful to thee thy wives to whom thou hast paid their dowers, and those whom the right hand possesses out of the prisoners of war whom Allah hath assigned thee, has assigned thee, and daughters of thy parental uncles and aunts, and daughters of thy maternal uncles and aunts who migrated from Makkah with thee, and any believing woman who dedicates her soul to the Prophet of the Prophet wishes to wed her. For this only for thee and and not for the believers and not for the believers at large we know what we have appointed them as to their wives and the captives whom their right hands possess in order that we should be no difficulty for thee and Allah is reprobate I'm not going to read that stuff exalting Allah uh, if, you, if you're reading here, they're not just talking about sex slaves with wives. They're also talking about the, those that are captive, that the right hands possess. Okay, there you go. There you go. You have slavery being taught in the Quran. And, and here's where Islam teaches that you should have more than one wife. That I guess one's not enough. The Bible specifically teaches that two become one flesh, not three or four or five. But see, the Mo Muslims seek a heaven that have rivers of wine. And I guess this is to uh, fuel the drunken orgies that take place there with the uh, hundred and so many, th I don't know, how many is it, virgins they are looking for in heaven again? Oh man, it's ridiculous that they're not looking for relief from all this lust and the pleasures of the flesh. Um, in Sarah 4 3, if you fear that ye shall not be able to deal justly with orphans, marry women of your choice, two or three or four. But if you sh if you fear that ye shall not but if you fear that ye shall not be able to deal justly with them, then only one, or a captive that your right hands possess. Again, there you go, a captive. It's okay if you're not married, as long as they're your slave. That will be more suitable to prevent you from doing injustice, <laughs> really. And if you fear that ye will not deal fairly with by the orphans, Marry of the woman whom seem good to you, two, three, or four, and if you fear that you cannot do justice to so many, then only one are the captives that your right hands possess. Thus it is more likely that you will do will not do injustice. So more set more slavery to women. 
But not only that, it's okay to practice polygamy. In, Sir, in here in Surah chapter number 2 and verse number 223, Your wives are as a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how ye will, but do some good act for your souls beforehand. Okay, so basically Muhammad said in there, was saying there that you just go ahead and do do your, what you want to your wives, how and when you want to. But, I, but before you do, make sure you do some good act for yourself, for your soul or whatever, before you do that. Uh, that that's, that's pretty wicked. So, check this out in Surah, chapter number 2 and verse 282. It's a lengthy chapter, and I don't care to read all that stuff. So let's, let me just go ahead and pluck out the snippet. I've already provided you the chapter and verse. I mean, all you have to do is plug that into Google and read it yourself. Let his guardian dictate faithfully and get two witnesses out of your own men. And if they're not two men, then a man and two women, such as you chose for witnesses so that one of them errs, the other can remind her. Okay, and more about, they believe that one man is equal to two women. Allah directs you as regards to, or regards your children's inheritance to the male a portion equal to that of two females. I mean, there you have it, okay. They actually believe that a woman, one woman is not the same. It, it, they believe that one woman is not as valuable as one man. They think the man is better. Now, in Christianity, we believe that the man is the head of the woman, but in no wise is a man better than a woman. We are ordained for different positions, and just because a woman has not been given the authority to rule over the, over the house as a man has authority, that doesn't actually mean that her testimony is somehow worse or less valuable than a man's testimony, or she's somehow more stupid or unbelievable because she needs to be reminded? Or was Muhammad claiming that only women forget and men never forget anything? Is that right? Hmm. Now, from the Hadith, we can read a couple of verses out of that as well to also prove that Muslims think women are nothing but basically sex slaves or dogs. In, the, in Bukhari 6, uh, chapter 6, 301, Muhammad said, Is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They, reply, they replied in the affirmative. He said, quoting Muhammad, This is the deficiency in her intelligence, her being women. So Muslims actually think that women are more stupid than men. They think they're more mentally deficient. The Bible doesn't teach that women are more deficient in intelligence than men. It just teaches that the man is the head of the woman. So check this out in Bakari chapter number 6, verse 301. Muhammad said, Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menace? The woman replied in the affirmative. He said, This is the deficiency in her religion. Allah has obviously made the woman deficient in the practice of her religion as well as giving them menstrual cycles. <laughs> Are you serious? So a woman can't call out and pray, on, pray to Allah because he's so reprobate when she's on her menstrual cycle. He's not going to hear. Did you also know that the Quran teaches that if a, a dog licks a Muslim's hand, Allah can't hear him either? I mean... There's all kinds of stupidness to this whole false religion of Islam. Don't get fooled by these people. This is not compatible with Christianity. And this is not of the true living God. Allah is a black rock over in Mecca that Muslims travel to to go worship because they're idolaters. Okay, Bakari chapter 2 verse 29. The prophet said, I was shown the hellfire, and the majority of its dwellers were women who were ungrateful. It was asked, do they disbelieve in Allah, or are they ungrateful to Allah? He replied, they are ungrateful to their husbands, and are ungrateful for the favors and the good charitable deeds done to them. If you have always been good, benevolent 
to one of them, and then she sees something in you, not of her liking, she will say, I never received any good from you. What kind of crap is that? <laughs> because what's important here is the well, okay, so they're saying that the majority of the occupants in hell are actually women that were ungrateful for husbands, not actually unbelievers in Allah, but there were, there, I mean, not this proves that that's false right there, because there are not more people that have believed on Allah than believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, it's not possible that there's more people in hell that were believers on Allah than anybody else. But also, it's important because only the only women in heaven that are actually mentioned by Muhammad are all those virgins that are promised with sexual desires to um, the, uh, the, belie the men believers on Allah that just can't get over their lust for women because um, that is the only thing that that's driven by is a man's lust for what? What was between a woman's legs? Because that's why they want virgins. And that's why we want lots of them in their little heaven that's filled with rivers of wine so they can have their drunken orgies like I was saying earlier. But like I said, what the Muslims care about is what's between the woman's legs. And let me go ahead and back that up, okay? That's not actually what I think. That's actually what this thing teaches here. And uh, it's actually book 62 and number 81. It's not chapters and verses like the Bible, so I do apologize about that. But in the Bukhari, the prophet said, The stipulations most entitled to be aided by are those which you are given the right to enjoy the woman's private parts, or rather, the stipulations of the marriage contract. Let me back that up for you. They actually said private parts in this book. I, I was reading this word for word. Mm-hmm. So let me go ahead and show you how 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 sick Muhammad really was. This is what he based what he looked for a wife on. And whenever you hear me talking about Muhammad being a pervert child molester that only lusted after women, well, this is going to substantiate that part. A woman came to Allah's apostle and said, Oh, by the way, this is in book 62 and number 58. And uh, A woman came to Allah's apostle and said, Oh, Allah's apostle, I have came to you to present myself to you for marriage. Allah's apostle glanced at her. He looked at her carefully and fixed his glance on her and then lowered his head. When the lady saw that he did not say anything, she sat down check this part out. A man from his companions got up and said, Oh, all is apostle. If you're not in need of her, then marry her to me. The prophet said, Have you got anything to offer? The man said, No, by Allah, all, uh, oh, all is apostle. The prophet said to him, Go to your... And the po prophet said to him, Go to your family and try and find something. So the man went and returned, saying, No, by Allah, O oh Allah's apostle, I have, found, I have not found anything. The prophet said, Go again and look for something, even if it were an iron ring. He went and returned, saying, No, Allah, O oh Allah's apostle, I cannot find even an iron ring, but this is my... Azar, a waste sheet. He had no uh, upper garment. He added... I give half of it to her. All his apostles said, What will she do with your czar? If you wear it, she will have nothing over herself. In other words, she'll be naked. And if she wears it, then you will have nothing over yourself. Therefore, so the man sat for a long period and got up to leave. When all his apostles saw him leaving, he ordered that he called back. When he came, the prophet asked him, how much of the Quran do you know by heart? The man replied, I know such surah and such surah and such surah, naming the surahs. The prophet said, Can you recite it by heart? And he said, Yes. The prophet said, Go, I'll let you marry her for what you know of the Quran as for what you know of the Quran. So but Muhammad actually proved that he didn't actually care about what he knew about the Quran to start off with. He was actually holding out for money because he wanted payment. 
he was trying to sell her off like a hooker because Muhammad obviously envisioned himself as a high-class pimp of Allah. Not only is he pimping out a false religion, he wanted to pimp out he wanted to pimp out the women that he didn't think enticed his lust enough. And maybe this woman wasn't old, or maybe this woman wasn't young enough for him. Who knows? I'm here in Bakari, 62. 81 or book 4 number 1039 um, Al Aswad reported that Aisha said you have made us equal to the dogs and the asses whereas I lay on the bedside of the messenger of Allah came and stood in the middle of the bedstead and said prayer I did not take off the quilt from me in that state so I moved the quilt away quietly from the front legs of the bedside and thus came out of the quilt and here you have Aisha and by the way Aisha this that was Muhammad's uh, six to nine year old wife I'm not sure how old she was here when the state w was made but um, this also was Muhammad's favorite wife and like I said Muhammad was a child molester and here we have Aisha saying how lousy Muhammad was and so one last other point that I just now stumbled across after I'd even already put my short video together, I couldn't leave this out. If you look in Quran 434, you're going to read something like this. Men are superior to women on account of the qualities with which God has gifted the one above the other, and on account of the outlay they make from their substance for them, Virtuous women are obedient, careful during the husband's absence, because God has of them been careful. But chide those for whose refractories you have cause to fear. Remove them into beds apart and scourge them. But if they are obedient to you, then seek not occasion against them, verily. I'm not going to exalt that filthy reprobate Allah that teaches a man to beat his wife. What a, what a lousy, wicked man that hits his wife. Um, and in another translation, I mean, it says that men are in charge of women because Allah has made them one has made the one of them to excel the other because they spend of their property for support of the woman. So good women are the obedient, guarding in the secret which Allah has guarded. As for those whom you fear rebellion, admonish them and banish them to beds apart and scourge them. Then if they obey you, seek not the way against them. Lo, what a reprobate God Allah is. And Muslims are wicked as hell. I mean, that is puking sick. And I'm about sick and tired of hearing Muslims trying to tell me how they treat their wives better than Christians. I mean, you all are going to have to stop lying about the beliefs that you hold because the Quran says that you believe this. Um, let me go ahead and tell you how Christians regard our wives. Because here is exactly what God's view is on how husbands and their wives are. Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse 24 in the Holy Bible, the King James Bible. The only one that is God's word because there are many versions but only one, one actual true version. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives as even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, now you understand what's going on right there? God said that you actually have to love your wives as Christ even loved the church. And that means that Christ died for us. He gave his life for us so that we could be saved. A man is supposed to sacrifice himself for his wife, but Muhammad taught that a husband's wife is more like a floor mat to be walked on so he don't get his boots dirty and so that he can get pleased in every way that he feels like when he feels like. And uh, with these verses in mind in the Quran, I urge you um, study one. I even have one in my possession. Um, look, if you actually use look at their word, they're they're instructed 
to hate and curse their enemies, to lie to people, and to beat their wives. I mean, how, how wicked do you have to get to, to beat a woman? I mean, clearly even Islam believes that the woman is a weaker vessel. So why is it that the man feels like he's justified in beating on someone weaker? Is that because Islam chooses to pick on weak people? That's why they like to kill Christians and such, because God commands us to stand down when somebody comes to kill us for the faith. And that makes it easy for the Muslims to martyr up Christians all the day long. So, um, here's one video and many that are going to be coming up exposing how Islam is nothing but a religion of hatred and violence, not just child molestation. So anyway, I believe I've provided more than enough evidence from the uh, Quran and the Hadith to um, substantiate that Muslims regard their women as dogs or party favors or in the words of Aisha, like dogs and asses. Um, so anyway, um, if you are a Muslim, it's not my intention to offend you personally, but yes, what, what you believe is not the truth. You'll need to repent of these lies and come to the saving knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, to all of you, my friends and enemies alike, I love you and praise the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.